It was in the year 1843 that the genius of the English storyteller Charles Dickens crafted what is arguably the definitive secular Christmas story ever written, A Christmas Carol. This story is read repeatedly each year at, during the Christmas season. It's been published a countless number of times and has been at least made into eight different movie renditions. It is a timeless story of darkness and light, caring and sharing, greed and benevolence, extreme sadness and utter joy and celebration. It is a story of life and death and life renewed. A Christmas Carol is a gospel message. The moral element of this timeless tale is a story of redemption and reclamation, reformation and reconciliation. The story has much in common with the first Christmas story when the Christ child was born into our world. Jesus came and visited humanity to redeem us, to awaken us to our current state of hopelessness in the world and the absence of God in our lives. The coming of Jesus is a message of redemption whereby God through Jesus Christ desires to bring lasting change into all of our lives. Just as the three Christmas spirits of the past, the present, and the future reveal to Scrooge the miserable state of his life as it unfolds in the story, so we may know the gift of Jesus who shows us our past, present, and future, that if left to our own choices and volitions, will come back to haunt us in the course of our lifetimes. The good news is that Jesus came to set us free from the problem of our present lives. He came to give us the opportunity not only to deal with our past sins, which hinder us in the present, but then to move us on to refine and redeem our future. A Christmas carol, you see, is about the back side of the Christmas card. It is about the light of God coming into the world. Ebenezer Scrooge, the miserly old protagonist of our story, despises Christmas and everything to do with it. To love Christmas, Scrooge has to change. And like most of us, Scrooge doesn't want to change. The story begins with Scrooge suffering a visit from his long dead and longtime business partner, Jacob Marley. From the book itself, Dickens wrote, Jacob Marley was dead all right. The register was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and his name was good for anything that he put his hand to. Jacob Marley was so dead, in fact, that he was beyond oblivion. For Marley, in death there was no escape. We saw that in the movie. Jacob Marley knew that he was dead. The clanking chains told him, as did the weight of the money box fixed to his ankle and the ledgers wrapped around his waist, that slowed his pace of his aimless wandering in the spirit world. He knew that he was dead, and he knew that. When he was alive, in fact, he had been dead. There had been no life in him at all. Realizing this, he genuinely tells Scrooge that he will suffer the same fate. Scrooge doesn't believe him. It takes three Christmas apparitions the whole night to teach Scrooge that he really is a dead man and that indeed he has been dead since he was a young man. He was dead due to his unfathomable greed and love of money. The real essence of the Christmas spirit of the Christmas story is about God coming into the world of darkness with God's love and light. It was the great prophet Isaiah who prophesied that when the Messiah arrived on the world scene, the people that were in darkness would see a great light. In the first Christmas story, the shepherds are blanketed 
in a great light as they tended their flock in the cold, dark winter night of the first Christmas. Ebenezer Scrooge, the mean-spirited, malevolent old man and miser, portrays well the darkness which we're talking about. Most of us know the storyline of how the miserly Scrooge is transformed one night from being lost in the dark journey of a miserable and selfish life to finding himself in the light of a new Christmas day. In the darkness of Christmas Eve, 1843, Scrooge cannot be penetrated by the light of God's love. At the end of the story, not only is he filled with the light of God's love, he returns that love by filling the lives of others with the love that only gives and expects nothing in return. Christmas Eve finds Scrooge locked up in the dim darkness of his counting house, turning away his employee, his faithful employee, Bob Cratchit, his nephew Fred, and various solicitors on behalf of the poor and disadvantaged. Later that night, we find Scrooge locked up in the dismal darkness of his meager apartments, which themselves are entombed within a dismal, dank warehouse. Dickens tells us in the book, darkness is cheap, and Scrooge liked it. Darkness is cheap, isn't it? easy to create with its ingredients of despair, depression, and denial. It hides what we fear, keeps us from facing what is true, allowing us to be blind to the truth. But like so many things that come cheaply, our love affair with them comes at a great cost. Could we all really be members of the firm Scrooge and Marley? Christmas Carol is truly the Christmas story dug very deep. In the past, in my own life, I have known dark times and darkness, but as my faith journey led me to the light of God's love, like Scrooge, I now know that I can overcome the darkness. It is possible. Ironically, the ghost of his business partner, Jacob Marley, comes not to haunt him, but to free him. Scrooge tells Marley he is in no need of him, that he is a dead man. Scrooge takes note that Marley is bound by heavy chains, cash boxes, and ledgers. Scrooge asks him why he is so bound. Dickens writes, Marley says, I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard, and of my own free will I bore it. And he tells Scrooge that the chain that is binding him right now in the darkness of his life is even full and heavy and as long as this one seven Christmas Eves ago. And if he does not leave the darkness of humanity behind, he will be carrying a ponderous chain indeed. There is both light and wisdom here. Though chains placed by others might entangle us, most of our chains are forged by the part of our spiritual self that likes darkness and disregards the light. Marley was chained to cash boxes, deeds, and ledgers, as Scrooge would be. So what chains entangle us today? Jesus came into the world for what had been hoped by mankind from time immemorial to set the captive free from his chains, both physical and spiritual. To our spiritual souls, our chains would be obliterated, providing our willingness to leave the darkness behind. Scrooge refused to accept the simple gift of Christmas, so ghosts were dispatched rather than grace. And yet the ultimate outcome was love. We need, we crave the light of God's love as love that comes to give us worth and value. So look to Scrooge, look at Scrooge. Without God's love, without the light of God's promise, Scrooge is doomed. The basic premise of a Christmas carol is that Scrooge is unworthy of God's mercy and so are we. 
Scrooge has no mercy, so why should he receive any? Yet mercy and love come to Scrooge, and through the three ghostly visits of the spirits of Christmas past, present, and future, Scrooge is transformed and made worthy again, just as God does for us. Love and judgment bring Scrooge into the light, you see. When will we ever learn that God does not love us because we have worth, but loves us to give us worth? God loves us to save us from the grim future that we make for ourselves when we live not subject to the unconditional love of God. God's coming in the form of the Christ child placed in a feeding trough is God's mysterious, unique way of saying to humanity, I love you. Each of us is striving to choose a new future, a future of God's light and love. We must use the present moment to disconnect from the mistakes, injuries, and sins of the past. God forgives the past, but I think the Christmas lesson from Scrooge is that the past must be forgiven in the present in order to forge a new future. In our lifetimes, the spirit of Jesus has shown us our past, present, and our future, hasn't it? What will ours be? Will we have a moment of redemption? Will we be a changed people? Scrooge makes a statement of repentance to the final ghost in A Christmas Carol. The final ghost is a tall, dark, foreboding character, speechless. He realizes he will live a different life by meeting this ghost. He says to the ghost, I will honor Christmas in my heart and keep it all year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. All three shall strive within me. To be like Scrooge, we must honor Christmas and keep it all year. At Christmas, we proclaim in the mystery that is our faith that God in Christ visits all of creation and brings the transforming love of God into the darkness of our souls. That's what Christmas is about. But that transformation, we must remember, comes from the love of God, using the present moment, not to bind ourselves to a broken past, but to find healing in a new future of God's promise. May we find again the same pure, joy and hope this Christmas as Ebenezer did. In the words of the old Christmas carol, joy to the world, let every heart prepare him room. Thanks be to God. Amen.